so now you're going to have Adrian speaking about implementing phony wise with GTK tips and tricks. Hello, everybody, and thanks for being there. So, I'm Adrian Plazas, I work for Purism, and my job there is to make GNOME applications work on the phone. And this implies lots of constraints and small things to do to tweak these applications. And I would like to share with you some tiny tricks and tips I found out in this first mo few months of work. So, first, uh, phones don't have mouse, mice, nor keyboards. It may sound obvious, but it's the kind of thing you have to keep in mind when you are porting an application to a phone. It's, you can't rely on keyboard shortcuts, for example. You can't rely on moving things with keyboard arrows or things like this. You can't rely on the precision of a, of a pointer, a mouse pointer. And this also implies to use gestures. It's obvious also, but you do have to implement gestures for your application to be very comfortable to when using them on the phone. And all of this, you can do it on desktop application. It's very convenient. And we already started to do that a lot over the previous years, um, mainly for tablets or for laptops with touchscreens. And another big constraint of phones is that Phones are really small. Again, it feels obvious, but it's one of the largest constraints we I encountered when trying to port some applications. For example, this is very likely what the sizes are going to be on the Librem 5. Keep in mind these are on points. Understand pixels divided by the scale. Look, so it's going likely to be uh, at scale 2, hence we are going to have a 360 points width, it's really small. Next to no, if not no GNOME application right now fits in that. Even, you would probably think that even GNOME calculator can fit in. It can't, even if it's one of the smallest we have. So if you want to make an application smart on the phone, you have to go work against this, around this. This implies being very careful with explicit size requests, explicit width and height requests. You can use them, but be extremely careful to use them smartly and, if possible, not at all. Use GTK stack. It's part of what we are using since, I don't remember how, since how long we have them, since probably the beginning of GTK 3 and GNOME 3. But they are just extremely convenient when it comes to put every many widgets and many views in a small space. So again, it's obvious, but you can also use some other widgets, for example, HDI column, which is um, from a library we are working on, which is a widget library called libhandy, which is targeted at mobile phones, implementing, uh, implementing mobile phone UIs. For example, it has several widgets, like a dialer and things like this. So HDI column, what it is, it helps you keep in column style UIs to remain thin on the desktop. It's lim it constrains them to a maximum width that you can define. So you can have UIs which are really small and fit on the phone screen, but still look good and not too widespread on a laptop or a desktop. So I recommend you to try to use it if you want to do that. Another one is to use HDI leaflet. So a leaflet, the yeah, concept is that you can f it can be folded or unfolded depending on the room you have. For example, it's like like a map, uh, like a leaflet map. You can just if you have tons of room, you can expand it on your desktop, or you could have it folded on itself and use it small. And it's just exa exactly the same window, just folded that you can see. And it's really convenient to reach small sizes with existing UI and to port GNOME applications which are using a sidebar, for example, to make them fit a small screen. So try to use it if you want to do that. Um, GTK label. You have no idea how many applications can't small sizes because of GTK labels. Because most of the time, 
they limit a lot the size, uh, the minimum size of your window. So if I recommend you highly to use either ellipsization or to set them to be wrappable, either one or the other. But they, if you do that to all your labels, your windows will be able to reach way smaller sizes in no time. It's a huge, huge constraint. Move the app menu. We all want, apparently we are all moving to that and it's really nice to have this. It's not per se useful for a phone as is, but it's just really convenient because it allows us to save some space to the shell's header, um, top bar, for example, compared to GNOME shell. Keep the close button if you're designing for a phone. It may sound counterintuitive because typically for new eyes don't have a close button on their windows. But keep it because you want your application to work just as well on the desktop as on the phone. But we can drop the close window at, for absolutely all windows with, by just changing um, the window decorations we have. So keep adding it even if you design for the phone first. And that's all, that's about it. It was really just a small lightning talk. Um, if you have any questions, it was mostly, as you see, as you can see, things which seem obvious, but you, that have to be kept in mind so far for when designing for a phone. So question, yes? Yes. Idea, to be honest, I uh, I know that. Uh, yeah. It's, I have no idea, to be honest. It's a problem out of itself. Uh, for the moment, my goal was to allow application to reach small sizes. It's yeah. And it's this don't look. If you expand it. Uh, besides limit, and I don't get what such changes to have this. Besides, if you don't have them, it just limits you to the minimal size, doesn't it? Yeah. The default one? Yeah. Oh. If I remember correctly, uh, Michael Catanzaro, here you are, started a talk some time ago about um, setting minimal, uh, by default, some sizes for the windows, didn't you? A few months ago? Okay. No. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yes. Which one you said? Leaflet. Uh, demonstrate it uh, if you want. Okay. Um, yeah. Smaller than what? Oh, sure. <laughs> the back button is oh, sorry. The back button is not automatic. You have, but you can know the state of the leaflet. 
So you can trigger it if it's to, you can show it when it's folded and hide it when it's not, for example. That's just how I do, or all I do in that case. Yes? Uh, I'm not sure I heard everything, but um, from uh, so <laughs> what I heard, if I understood correctly, what you said is that you were asking me whether it would be feasible to have all applications uh, automatically. Yeah. Oh. Uh, not everything is going to be automatic, but ideally you can do that in a single UI, and I hope that's what we would start to do. So, for example, in, in that context, as you can see, there, are, there is, let's see it. It's just a li little bit of tweaks to make things adaptable. Rather than having, uh, having two different UIs is so much work, and it's such a big burden on the maintenance point of view. I'm not sure it's a good idea. I, I, I'm not sure I got your question, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure most applications will need s small work on them, but. Can you repeat, please? You wouldn't have to have a separate. You think it's more that can be merged back into the standard code base without having a separate I, builder file? I'm not sure it would be nice to have a separate builder fi file. Most of the actual Windows, I mean, the actual GNOME human interface guidelines are pretty close to a mobile, to mobile ones. There is not that much to change, just tweaks to make them fit small screens most of the time and they would work great. You add a bit more gestures and they will, would look great already. Yes? So in various cases, you talk about having some kind of uh, landscape that you have We could have this. Maybe, to be honest, I didn't think about that yet. So, uh, do you have I, I maybe more concrete examples of what you thought about? Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. You you probably could. I didn't. I thought about that a bit. Also, it could be useful on some applications indeed, especially when you're starting to reach really. Small, um, oh, whatever. It's really small sizes. Um, and it can mostly, I think, be done on at the at the Windows level, maybe, or at the widget level, depending on really what you want to implement. But having that done automatically may be a bit tricky, maybe. You could maybe have some sort of high-level containers, which is adding you, giving you extra information that you could propagate then into the contained widgets. For example, to turn a GTK box from horizontal to vertical or vice versa. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Could be a good idea, in India. Yes.
Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't look much at what is happening in web development, I have to admit. Uh, I have the impression that the constraints are a bit different somehow. I may be wrong. That's kind of the thing I got. And the technologies may be different too, so but I'm open to any ideas. If you have suggestion to anything, just let me know. Having two UI files which would switch them dynamically, could it work with GTK? Because it's yeah. at the construction, UI files used as the construction of the widget. Oh. I wonder how it would be handled. No. Well, thanks. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, um, I, I, th I may have the latest version of Epiphany running, which had some adaptive uh, UI changes. I will check if I have it.
Okay, I'm just installing the latest version of Epiphany, so sorry, taking it's taking a tiny bit of time. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the window is really small, uh, when it comes to the width, I mean, uh, yeah, we add an action bar at the bottom which replicates exactly what was in the header bar, besides, of course, just the application menu and the title widget, the URL bar. And that's it. And it allows the application to reach way smaller sizes. For example, the size of, of a phone screen. And before that, it was just not really usable at all with that because the URL bar was really extremely thin and just not usable. Yeah, no, it can reach pretty small size. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not on this computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for coming to this talk.